Here are the similarities and differences between the Razer Siren V3 Mini and Razer Siren V3 Chroma. I'll also be switching between the audio of both of these devices so you can really get an idea of what they sound like. As for similarities, both of these are condenser microphones, super cardioid, so they have a pretty narrow pickup pattern in front of them and they're rejecting a good amount of noise behind them and to the sides. They both have a USB-C to USB-A cable. They have a mic mute button on the top capacitive and they can both record at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Right now I'm recording them at 48 kilohertz though because in OBS that's as high as it can go up to. Now as for the differences, starting off with the build, it's clear obviously that the V3 Chroma is taller. It also has some more metal on the build, so both of these are mostly plastic, but the grill is made of metal and the yoke on the V3 Chroma is also metal. And aside from the capacitive mute button, there's no knobs or switches on the V3 Mini. On the V3 Chroma, there's a gain knob on the front and you can change the microphone volume with that. But at the same time, if you alter it in Synapse, you can toggle it to be the headphone gain instead. Speaking of that, on the back of the microphone next to the USB-C port, actually under it, there is a headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter. You can use this to monitor your audio. Personally, I'm not doing that simply because there is no low impedance mode. So my IEMs, they kind of have like the static sound when I put it in certain devices. For mic monitoring, and since this doesn't have a low impedance mode, I don't really like hearing that. Now, even though both of these have the same USB-C to USB-A cable, the V3 Mini's cable is only 51 inches long. Really disappointing. It's actually kind of hard to set it up here with my tower so far away. The V3 Chroma's wire is 79 and a half inches. Also, when it comes to the bills, there's 5 8 inch threading on the Razer Siren V3 Mini and the Razer Siren V3 Chroma on the bottom of the microphone itself. If you take off the yoke, there's 5 8 inch threading, but on the bottom of the yoke, which I think you should leave that on anyway for good adjustment, it has 5 8 inch threading and 3 8 inch threading so that you don't need an adapter to put it on any type of boom arm. So basically, the V3 Mini is a lot more minimalist. If you just want a microphone, you can plug it in and then just start talking into it. You don't need to adjust any knobs or anything like that. Then that's the way to go with that. But if you want a little bit more control than the v3 chroma that's just talking about the build there's also the sound quality and some of the features that you get in razor synapse so overall i really love the sound of both of these microphones but i am partial to the v3 chroma because it is a little bit warmer it has a little bit better background noise rejection so my pc fan is on since i'm recording this in obs right now and the cpu fan is actually max so i'm going to be quiet and then switch between both of these mics And you can hear that the Razer Siren V3 Chroma definitely picked up less background noise, even though I've leveled the audios when I'm actually talking. And I did this test multiple times. I've even switched the positioning. But another demonstration that I can give you is I'll go ahead and do some keyboard typing. So first, this will be with the Razer Siren V3 Mini. And now the Razer Siren V3 Chroma. So when it comes to bumps on the desk like that, the Razer Siren V3 Chroma does a lot better job, but that's partially the build itself and the shock resistance. Both of these are honestly pretty decent at it, but there's a high pass filter that's enabled by default on the Razer Siren V3 Chroma and you can adjust that in Razer Synapse. So I'll talk about Synapse last. So if I were to EQ the Razer Siren V3 Mini, I'd probably drop the upper mid mage just a tad because it's a little bit harsh up there. I'm not sure if I can really do too much about the background noise rejection. Maybe I could turn my fans down, but that would compromise performance if I was like playing games or something. Thing. The Razer Siren V3 Chroma out the box, I just absolutely love the sound. Both of these devices are compatible with Razer Synapse and it helps these microphones out, but it in particular helps the Razer Siren V3 Chroma. I'll talk about the difference between how these interact with Synapse right now. So if I go into the V3 Mini over here, you can see that I can change the volume and I can change the sample rate. And since there's no knob, this is actually really useful so that I can just change the gain of the microphone right there. And you can probably hear that as you're listening back. Also, this mic mute button can become multi-function using these buttons. So if you want to increase the volume, even though you didn't have Razer Synapse, like you can just be like, okay, two times mic volume up, and then three times mic volume down. I accidentally mute the mic like I just did. So, uh. so Razer Synapse doesn't do a ton for the Razer Time V3 Mini, but you do get this stream mixer. Now, a lot of different companies are doing something like this, like an audio mixer, like a virtual audio mixer. If turn stream mixer on hopefully this doesn't mess anything up in my recording but basically it allows you to add other sound sources so i actually have even my headset right here i could put this in in like a new input for example so i could do like add a 50x mic out 
will be different than my other microphones, but this is a lot of stuff and I already have different audio mixers, I already have OBS, so let me just turn this whole thing off. And let's move on over to the Razer Siren V3 Chroma. This is where you control what the front dial does right here. Microphone volume or headphone volume. And you can change what the mute button does. And like right here, it's toggle the effect on or off. If I do three presses, change what the effect is right now. And this one is the audio meter, as you can tell. And here you can like see visually if I change this up and down, that is changing the microphone volume. And I can change it to headphone monitoring volume as well. And this is for mic monitoring if I wanted it, but I don't have any earbuds plugged in. And advanced gain settings is something that I would personally avoid just because I want you to listen right now. I'm just gonna be completely quiet. Now with this on. Then auto gain control. That one should be really obnoxious where you're just going to hear that PC fan, but it's not just the fan. It's like a distorted sounding version of it. It's just, yeah, both of these are problematic with like quiet recurrent background sounds because it amplifies them for no reason. This high pass filter is really useful. You turn this off. Some of the bumps come through like on a boom arm pretty loud, but you turn it on. It actually reduces that quite a bit. Stream mixer, same thing here. I'm not gonna show it again. And then here the lighting, a bunch of different effects and see it's on the audio meter and this will live toggle as you move them. So I can switch to these different ones. So it's pretty cool. But honestly, having these all tied to the mic mute button, I'm really not that big of a fan of it because you'll accidentally mute the mic as you're doing these things. And now for my verdict, if you can spring for it, I do prefer the Razer Siren V3 Chrome. I think it sounds a little bit better as far as the tonality, a little bit better background noise rejection, plosive resistance. It has that high pass filter. The RGB is really cool. And you get a few more features in Razer Synapse, even though I'm not personally a fan of it. But if you don't need all those fancy things and you don't even necessarily want to use Synapse, you can just plug this in the Razer Siren V3 Mini and go. And it's an excellent sounding budget option microphone. Personally, I don't think either of these necessarily dethrone the Samsung Q2U. And I still really like the HyperX Dualcast, especially with that shock resistance that it has. But if you're a Razer fan, both of these are good options, but I would get the V3 Chroma if you can.